Hi, I'm Rulov, and this is a tool breakdown video. I'm going to focus on all the components that comes with the machine and how to set up external hardware. Some of the components are optional extras and some are standard. The order of topics are as follows. The wireless probe, the manual probe, emergency stop button, air assist model, work holding tools, bit collar installer, dust collection model, rotary model, spindle collet installer, and the laser model. Let's go. First, let's have a look at the wireless probe. On the box, you have instructions on how to use the probe and the included shanks. Standard inclusive is the probe and the three collet options. The probe has a built-in battery and needs to be charged to 3.7 volts for the first time using the machine. The probe automatically charges when the machine is turned on. A neat feature in this probe is the LED pointer that is used to scan margin before running a job. This gives you a boundary borderline to check any obstructions. This activates by double tapping the pointer. To pair this probe to the machine, firstly go to the software and find the pair function and start pairing. This will give you 30 seconds to press and hold the point for about 10 seconds. You will get a fast blinking light and then 5 stable blinks to show pair success. The probe that comes with your machine will already be paired. To change the collet shaft, just unscrew the back end of the probe. Included is the four shaft options, the quarter inch, the eighth of an inch, four millimeter and six millimeter. Keep in mind that you have to make sure that the collet in the machine matches the probe shaft. And lastly, here is where you check your voltage. If you need to use a different XY0 than anchor point 1 or 2, you need to do a manual XY probe to get the coordinate position of the material. First, you grab the manual probe and plug it into the side of the machine bed. Next, place the unit over the bottom left hand corner of the workpiece. Then in the controller's software, move the test rod manually to sit over the probe. Add on the cable magnet to the spindle and go to the XYZ function in the software. Nine is the preset thickness of the model and the test rod thickness is 3.175 and press OK. Hold the model in position and the rod will calibrate Z, X and then Y. Now you have a new XYZ location. In this case, Z is the height from the top of the material to the bottom of the test rod. To change the coordinates back to XY0 at anchor point 1, go to the position of anchor point 1 and set the coordinates back to X0, Y0 and Z will be updated once we do an auto Z height probe on the next cut. Emergency stop button, my favorite. Who doesn't like a big red button? This unit has exactly the same function as the button in front of the machine. Press this if you see a collision is about to happen or if there's something wrong with your cut. This button has two states, engaged and neutral. If pushed, the button is engaged and will give you an alarm on your controller software. To unlock the machine again, you need to set the button back to neutral. You do this by just turning the knob. Air assist model. The required pipe size is 8mm outside diameter. I needed to cut off one end of my pipe to get a clean edge. The pipe just pushes into the air in hole and clamps automatically. To release the pipe again, press the whole clamp rim backwards and the pipe will release. I am using a general compressor. Airflow is needed in cases using multi fluid bits of metal, laser cutting, or keeping the bed clean. In the controller software, switch on the air assist to check if it is working. If your programming software supports using air assist, M7 and M8 is the command. The direction of airflow is adjusted here and the airflow power is adjusted by first pulling and then rotating the front blue knob. Push again to lock. Work holding tools. Let's look at the items in the toolbox. This is the side clamps. This is the top clamps, two with a straight slot and two with an extra cross slot. You have three different length screws depending on the material thickness. And there's many ways of clamping. And this is merely a guide 
on how to clamp. First, you start with the waste board if you're cutting through the material. In some cases, the spoil board can be a bit bigger than the material. It is all depending on if you can still clamp the material down. For example, this option is not going to work because there is no way of clamping the aluminium down. You can use a top clamp, you can use side clamps, double-sided tape and glue in some cases. Some people will use a vise to clamp. You can mount it anchor point 1 or 2 or you can change the anchor point to the thicker bracket if you need to. There's quite a lot of options. Some clampings are easy and some are more complicated. It doesn't have to be square, as long as the part is secured, the clamp should work. I always use my hand to check if the part is secured sideways and upwards. Here are some other methods of clamping materials down. Next, we'll look at the bit collar installer. There are a few parts to this tool. The cap, and on the inside, the remover and the installer. First, we will install the collar by inserting the collar into the cap and then the bit. In the back end of the tool, insert the two little tubes and screw all together. The screw will push the bit into the collar at the correct length to suit the auto tool changer. When the thread stops, you can unscrew the front cap again to release the bit with its installed collar. To remove, place the bit back into the cap and then use the collar remover insert into the back part and by screwing this together will force the bit out of the collar and pop out of the front. Place everything back into the tool to store. Dust collection. The machine comes with a very capable dust collection vacuum and dust foot. It automatically switches on and is my preferred method of dust collection. You do have a connection at the back for an external vacuum option. This is the vacuum I'll be using with this machine. It's small but powerful and also nice to use on the inside of the machine. Now I didn't have a connector for this machine so I modeled and printed a 90 degree connector and fitted. On the inside of the machine you have to switch the outlet to the right hand side hole and in the software switch off the internal vacuum and release the dust foot to its cutting position. The dust foot can be a bit tricky to release. It took me a few tries but to do this pull this knob and turn 30 degrees to the right and the foot will release. To lock again pull and rotate back the 30 degrees. Fourth axis module. When you have removed the anchor point bracket, you can use the same dowel pins to locate the fourth axis model. Then you plug in the machine into the machine bed. This is located on the left hand side front of the bed. Next, you place the unit into the two dowel pins and fix the six mounting screws to the machine bed.
to mount the material into the unit, you need to use the two wrenches that comes with the model. First tighten with your hand and then use the wrenches to secure. Reminder to remove the dustbin when using the fourth axis and also remove the dust shoe as that might cause collision. To secure the opposite end of the material, slide the bracket with the point into the material, screw down the brackets, use the knob on the right to tension the material and screw the final locking screw. Changing the collet. First you need to drop the tool that is currently in the collet, so we will do that in the controller by clicking drop in the tool status drop down. This will release the tool automatically. I will remove the dust foot and use the collet installer to unscrew the existing collet, replace this with the needed collet and re-screw with the collet installer. Lastly, let's look at the laser model. Let's start by putting on the optional laser cover. This is available as an optional extra on the online store at makehero.com. This is recommended to people that use the laser for excessive time periods. It's a really easy installation, two zips in the front and four clips at the back. To insert the UV panel, just slide into the slot at the back of the cover. Lastly, a reminder to remove the laser cap before using the laser. It's quite an easy thing to forget. And remember to stay safe and use the goggles when using the laser cutter. So that's the breakdown of all the tools that comes with the machine. If you have any questions or comments, post that down below. Links to our Discord channel and other social media in the video description. And like and subscribe to see more Carvira videos.